Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a panel into your boat and this will be a panel that houses all of your electronic switches such as your switch panel, your main power on off switch, fuse box, whatever it is that you have in your build that you want to have access to. Oftentimes when you're doing a build, you try to figure out where do I want my control panel to be, whether it's on a side panel of a hatch or maybe in the top panel of a hatch where you open up the top of the hatch and it's right there facing up. In this case, I'm gonna have it on a recessed wall and I think that's a really cool way to do it. It's actually my first time doing it this way. Decided to share it with you guys on the channel in case you're considering doing it as well. So here are the three things that I'm gonna be installing on the panel. You've got your fuse block bus bar combo. This is a six gang one. So I can connect six things up here minimally. I've got my switch panel, my six gang switch panel. Also comes with a voltmeter right down there with two USB ports and this is the master on off switch for the boat. One thing I really like about the fuse block bus bar combo is it comes with fuses as well as some screws and the labels. Typically when you buy this someplace like Amazon, you won't get fuses with it. I've always had to buy my fuses separate, but when you get it from tvnation.net, you get this with it. So it's a really good combo deal, full package. You have everything you need. Check out tbnation.net and save 5% on your next order at checkout. Use our code BBF5. Just drop that code in at the checkout and get 5% off your next order, tbnation.net. So I chose this location strategically because this is a side that has my pumps. So the goal here is to have all the electrical wiring on one side of the boat. Any wiring in the back of the boat, including these pumps, LEDs back here, all the wiring will go through the bench behind the control panel, which would be right here. Same for anything up front, will come through this bench, through, through this hatch, and be centralized right here as well. So first thing I need to do is measure and cut my bottom track. It'll go from the rear of the bench to the front of this bench right here. All right, when I lay this down, looks like I have about a 1 16th gap uh, below the rails here. So I'm gonna take some flat bar. Luckily I have some one inch flat bar exact measurement of the width of the beams I put here new ribs I install on the floor of the boat and by the way guys if you haven't seen the video of how I created these ribs check the playlist all right I'll leave it linked at the top of the screen as well you'll notice the ribs of this boat are very narrow and be hard to get a rivet in here at least several rivets I went ahead and installed some one inch tubing and created my own ribs so I have stuff to mount onto so the height difference didn't come out perfect and technically I could probably just screw this in and call it a day, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna fill the little gap with some one inch by one eighth thick flat bar, which should fill the gap nicely. So I'm gonna do it on the other two pieces as well and that will solve for that. I just took my leveler and made a 90 made sure I came straight up right so I want to make sure that when I come out this angle and this wall gets put in it's not at an angle meaning it's too far out too far in come straight up make sure that you're dialed in right here nice and level so what that will do is let me know how far out I can go with my angle bracket right here <music> I've got all the top tracks in. I've got the one on the left, one on the right. Got the long center track that's 32 inches long right there. And you'll notice the bottom track angle is facing the inside of the boat and that's strategic. I have the bottom track wall towards the outside of the boat because I'm gonna be installing these supports on the back end of this. The front side of this aluminum is gonna provide support for the aluminum sheeting wall, the side wall that I'll install here. To fit the electronics that I'm gonna be installing right here on this side wall, I need to frame that out. And to do that, I'm gonna use aluminum tubing to do that. I wanna provide as much support to this catwalk as possible. If somebody wants to walk from front to back and actually walk along the side, you'll be surprised. I do it all the time on my boat. This will provide enough structure to hold body weight. So I'm gonna use tube uprights 
Unfortunately, I can't use tube in the bottom back here, which will probably be ideal, but I can't because of the rib that's back here. If you notice, it sticks up a bit because it's actually resting on the rib. So I'm just gonna put a piece of angle here and a piece of angle up top as well. One thing you really wanna take your time and do is measure and measure twice. Get the full length that you're dealing with, find center, and this is to center up your control panel properly, right? Here's my center mark. Like I mentioned, this is 32 inches wide. So I'm at 16 inches here, and I did a little mock-up back here, started to figure out, well, how much space do I need to have these three components? And that includes the inch and a half to mount the plate in place. And you'll see what I mean later. I got two inches on each side, which brings me to about 21 inches in all to space this out nicely. I've got center. This is where my uprights need to stop, right? So I'm gonna have the tubing on the outside. On the inside of this line, I'll have my angle of lumen that's attached to the tubing upright, and that will be the lip I need to secure the front plate on. You guys will see all of that come to life, but first, we need to measure and cut the tube, get that in place, measure, cut the angle for top and bottom, and get that in place as well. two uprights in. Over here I have one and a half by one and a half inch tubing, but on over here I have one and a quarter. I'm actually out of one and a half, but this is gonna be just fine. What's gonna matter is the piece of angle that I rivet into the two uprights, okay? And you'll see that later. The angle itself will be one and a half by one and a half, so I'll have the proper depth coming in to recess the control panel. Next, I wanna put in the bottom and top strips of angle aluminum. Put in your bottom piece first, Make sure it's flush. You just have one little corner right there and then put your uprights up against it. Riveted in the bottom angle piece right here. This is going to be the front face plate at the bottom. And for extra support for both the overall structure of this catwalk and the front facing part of this control panel, I put two pieces of angle, one on each corner. So this is very sturdy right now. I may add an additional piece here and there, but I'm gonna wait till after I get the control panel in there and just see how it feels in the end. The weakest point of this entire structure will be the middle right here. But after I get it all in there, I'll assess it and see if I need to put an upright going from this rib to the top here. I don't wanna do it now because I don't wanna go ahead and install something in right here as support and then put the switch panel in and it's hitting that support beam. So I'm gonna do that at the end if I need to. I'll test it all out with using wood that's gonna give this thing extra strength as well, so I'm not concerned about putting a whole lot of support back here for the top structure. I use 3 16 inch countersink rivets for the front, and I did that because I could use less, and of course they're big, bigger rivets, and I want this to be as strong as possible. So you guys can see countersink flush rivets. When you're laying aluminum sheet against aluminum, you need this to be completely flat flush surface and that's why I went with countersink rivets. And to make sure that the front panel does sit flush against this whole face, I'm gonna put some flat bar right here, 1 16th inch flat bar, just to fill the gap. When you put the tube up against the aluminum, of course you have a slight recess right there for the thickness of the angle, which is 1 16th, so some flat bar should take care of that. And technically you really don't have to do that, but if you wanna make it perfect, that's a good way to go. If you don't do it, you might have just a very slight flex in your front panel wall here, your side panel wall, which technically is not a big deal, but if you want it perfect against this, add a little bit of flat bar and that should make everything lay completely flush. So I was about to say, all right, next step is to install the side supports that will support the actual control panel tray. But I realized if I install this in, I won't have full access to be able to trace out the panel because I have one piece of aluminum sheeting that's gonna hit the front on this side and I need to be able to trace it out from behind. If I put those side brackets in, it's gonna limit my ability to get a nice good trace out for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace it out from behind make the cut, that'll be the actual piece of sheeting that the switch panel and all of the other components will be installed into. And once I get that done, I will go ahead and install all the remaining supports I need 
that the actual control panel tray will screw into. I'm gonna paint all of the trim black. You technically don't have to do it, it's all personal preference. If you wanna keep it with just the aluminum look, have at it. It's all up to you how far you wanna go with it. Sanded this down a bit with some 220 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander. So it just gave it a little bit of grit on it so the paint will stick to it. So next, just gonna clean this off with acetone and then paint. I'm painting them black so that everything matches in the end. The actual face plate will be black as well. That's kind of the best practice is to drill out all your holes, do all the things that you need to do to it that could potentially scratch the paint later. Just keeps you from getting frustrated when you do a perfect paint job and then you start drilling and scraping and doing stuff that just ruins it. I've learned that one the hard way. I've done it the other way around where I'll paint all the pieces first and then start drilling and doing what I need to do to get everything built out and I end up scraping up the paint and having to repaint it again. So just a little tip, go ahead and get everything drilled out, all the holes, all the cuts, and then paint it and then just reinstall it. And of course, reinstalling it will be a lot easier because you've got all the holes already in the perfect place, everything works. All of the primary framing for the control panel area is complete. Everything is painted, riveted in with countersink rivets. That will help to keep a low profile so you're not seeing the rivets, of course, Painting the rivets black also keeps them very hidden. The fact that you won't even see these rivets once the, pan once the panel is up, just an added thing. You actually don't need to really concern yourself with as much detail as I did because this interior part of the panel will be covered with the control panel wall. But whenever you do decide that you want to service any of the wires or anything like that, you pull the panel out and those rivets will stay hidden. So it's more for the boat owner than something that everyone that gets in this boat would actually see. But I like to do it. You know, if you're doing it, do it. Just go all out. Install aluminum flat bar on the top piece here as well as the bottom. That compensates for the little bit of 1 16th inch dip because of how the framing gets put together. So it keeps it completely flush at all of the corners and make sure that there's no bend in the panel once you install the panel in. So it's reinforced here, 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 all four sides and the top and bottom. So pretty straightforward. You know, you can put your own twist on this as well. There's several different ways you can actually go about framing this out. This is just one way. I might do it a whole different way the next time around, but next time I might go with using sheet and just doing a bending break on it. Be a little bit more complicated, but this is the most simple way that I could think of putting this together. And I think it came out pretty good. Next up is to continue working on the control panel. If you notice in this shot, I did do a switch panel change. I did not go with the TB Nation switch panel because it was just too tall to fit in this panel. So I'll just save that panel for another install. So instead I went with a narrow six gang switch panel from Amazon, installed a separate voltmeter, and of course then started to just add random stuff to this panel like a live old timer but that's how it is just can't help but adding more components to your boat i measured everything i needed cut my holes out i actually have it labeled in case you guys are interested for the fuse box which will go right here i'm going to have it turned sideways which will allow me enough length to get the eight gauge wire into the block and that's very important if you install the box too close to where you can put the hole to run the wire through it will not have enough space to bend and make it into the box ask me how i know that i had to learn that one the hard way and completely redo my panel because of course once you cut aluminum that's it you can't patch a hole so i've got this spaced out and i made the holes for the eight gauge I bored a half inch hole over here and realized, yeah, that's a little bit big. I went with 7 16th here. 7 16th is a much better, much more snug fit. So I'm gonna go with that and stick grommets in the holes. I did 5 16th inch holes down for the 14 gauge wires. And I'll have grommets in here as well, just to make it nice and protect the wires going through. This hole right here will be for my voltmeter which I've got right here, just cut that out. I did a one and one eighth inch hole there. Got my switch panel, I'm going with the six gang. This is by Nylite. And I actually have an extra plate, the same exact plate that's for this one, same exact measurements. And I literally just placed it where I needed it, traced out everything I needed. I'm gonna remove this and then cut this out right along these lines to create the opening for the back of the switch panel. Over here, I've got a hole cut out for the Lago timer. And I've got this one right here that I'm going to be installing. Got a 3 8 inch hole right here. And 
Last but not least, the main power switch, the two inch hole cut out for that. This is gonna be installed from behind the panel. You will see what all this looks like in the end. It's gonna look absolutely awesome. I forgot the size holes that I did for this. It's easy to figure it out. Just measure it out based on the screws that come with this. It all comes with everything you need. Just take off the back of the panel and hold it up to where you wanna install it on your plate. Make your marks, draw an X, find center, Put your hole saw there and drill it out. It gets a little bit tricky. You might have to do a little bit of maneuvering, a little, little bit of finagling. So this one here, I had to wedge out just a little bit, but enough that it'll still be hidden to make sure that this mounts flush through the panel. I'm near the end of prepping this panel. It took quite a bit of time. This is something that's a little bit time consuming, especially when you want to get it right. So last step, I'm going to cut this out for the switch panel and then paint it and start to do my wiring. So I'm gonna sand this down, just scuff up the top a little bit. Got 220 grit sandpaper right there. You could do 320 as well. All depends on what type of finish you wanna have after you paint it. The higher the grit, the smoother the finish will be, but 220 is good for this right here. <laughs> There you have it. Everything turned out really well. Simple DIY recessed control panel tray. This is one of many ways you can actually do this. This is just the simplest way I figured I could get it done and show you guys. Everything is nice and clean. Painted rivets, painted screws. I actually started to wire things up. Got the live volt timer in there I mentioned. Master switch, voltmeter, six gang switch panel, and my fuse box right there. Let me know if I left anything out this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Product links are in the video description below as well, as well as all of our affiliate links. Check them out. TB Nation, Amped Outdoors. Everything's down below. Get your discounts. Get your discounts. Hope you enjoyed this video. Got a lot more coming your way. This boat is further along. I've actually got a lot of the electrical done already. That I'm looking at it right now. I'll be bringing it to you on the channel soon. Stay tuned for that. And if you don't know, I do have a playlist on this build. So if you want to see this build from start to finish and see exactly what I've done on this build out. Check that playlist in the description below and be a part of this build out. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly hit that subscribe button, tap the notification bell so you know exactly when we upload a video. And last but not least, give us a thumbs up. Leave a like on this video, help a channel on YouTube. We greatly appreciate that. Time to get back on this build, get things wrapped up, get things done. We'll see you on the next video. <laughs>